Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Link. And I'm Red. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we are kicking off Sex Timber. Oh, that's good. Have we done that before? Sex Man, we're having uh, an incredible conversation with a qualified professional who knows all about sex. More than just a couple of boys have been having sex with the same ladies for a long, for a long time. And before you give Emily's bio, just want to say, hey, this podcast and this iteration of Sex Timber 2022 may not be for you. Um, so use your own discretion if you want to keep listening. Well, the disclaimer you, you might is say why, why. the reason why <laughs> is because we talk about we talk very specifically and explicitly Explicitly. about sex. Okay? So we're not holding anything back, we're not beating around the bush. Um, Man, we're already there. Um, So proceed informed, you know? Make an informed decision if you wanna be a part of this, but I gotta tell you, um, if you're up for it, this could be this could be really encouraging. It could be really enlightening. It could be really I, educational. I, I it could be really exciting. And we could, we're 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 breaking down the stigmas. We can talk about sex. Yeah. And we don't have to. Not just in September, but that is. We don't have what to do. apologize for it. Right. So, uh, give the bio, and then let's get into it with Emily. Emily Morse is a doctor of human sexuality and a sex therapist. She's recognized as one of today's most insightful sex educators, challenging cultural taboos, misinformation, and awkward sex talks. Love it. To create a future where people can deeply connect and shamelessly embrace pleasure. Love it. She's the host of Sex with Emily, a podcast that's been going on for a long time. Uh, 2005 and is what she told I mean, us. It might be the preeminent sex podcast. I'm gonna say that it is the preeminent sex podcast. She's inspired millions of people to normalize sex and pleasure by creating a safe space where people can explore. And that's exactly what we did with her in this episode. We explored many topics. Yeah, right right off right off the bat. <laughs> Here it is. Good Mythical Evening has been rescheduled. You can still watch it. You can rent it on video on demand. That will be available from September 12th through September 18th. You can rent it up to 9 p.m. Pacific. That's midnight Eastern and then watch that rental. So get in on the action, goodmythicalevening.com. It's really happening this time. Yeah! Emily, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Now we we talk about sex one month out of the year. You talk about sex all the time. Yeah. Well, speak for yourself, man. <laughs> you talk about, okay, well, we'll I mean, off the show, we'll talk about I, sex. And publicly every once in a while. You I just will, go out in public and talk about yeah, sex? Well, on the street corners, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, okay, yeah, Good so, for you, so man. well, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna assume that you know anything about our background, but I'm okay. just gonna, so one of the reasons that we waited to talk about sex publicly is our very, we come from a very conservative evangelical Christian background that we have since mm-hmm. uh, exited that world. Okay. And of course, so there was a lot of like, hey, if we're gonna talk about sex, you gotta talk about it in the right context, et cetera. And so it took us a, a while to get to a place where it's like, hey, let's just rip the Band-Aid off and just tell people that this is actually how we think. Uh, mm. And it's been incredibly freeing uh, you yeah. know, to be, to be able to discuss this stuff. But we haven't ever really discussed it with a professional before. Okay, okay. We're just going off our time. experience. It's time. And all our experiences with one woman each. Oh, so, with, your, with your wives, with your partners. Yeah. That's what right. What you guys... Well, especially, well, that's, thanks for that background because growing up in an environment, like, let me just say this. Most people on the planet are not comfortable talking about sex. It makes them uncomfortable. Obviously, if it's, they're not comfortable, it's, um, there's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of fear, especially people who grew up in very religious backgrounds. I think a lot of my listeners are people who are either still in that space or have moved beyond that space or left that space, but it's still like, how do you start talking about something that was so demonized your entire life? And now we're gonna talk about it. So it's mixed messages. And then no matter where you grew up, society doesn't actually welcome it with open arms. There's so much misinformation about sex. So it's just, I'm just glad that we've all arrived here today. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I, but I, I get why it's not easy. 
we want to we're countering that now with just being totally open and saying, hey, I think there's a lot of health in just putting it out there, and that's why I just want to start by jumping into orgasms. <laughs> oh, okay, well, can we can we talk about org, org <laughs> all types of orgasms? I want to have every type of orgasm that can be had. Gosh. And that's that's what I want to. I'm sorry. That's Emily. what I want to get out of but this. But you know what? There's no there's no shame in asking that question. But it's just the way you framed it when you said I want to jump into <laughs> orgasms. That was how you you, you could have said let's talk about orgasms. You know. Yeah. But it, Is I, there I, a I jumping I, orgasm? Can I can I <laughs> no. reach climax I, by jumping? I, I do think one of those little trampolines, like the little exercise trampolines. If you if you jump on one of those long enough and hard enough, I do believe you can have an orgasm on one. Really? Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, yeah. I mean, you could probably have an I, orgasm anywhere if you, if you really wanted to, but um, sure, that would be an interesting place. But I don't think we should jump. Here's the problem with orgasms. We think we should just be able to snap our hands and jump right into orgasms, but it takes a little bit of warm up. Something right. called foreplay, something called yep. understanding the orgasm. So, you I know. know. I know that for the most part. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying when it comes to... I mean, I'm not gonna have an orgasm right here. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a conversation about it. Right. Exactly. Cool. Because that's a whole and different I, show. I don't. That's wanna, not even yeah. my show. <laughs> okay. <The> fu- <laughs> um, I want to learn about new orgasms, and then I want to. I want to so that I can experience. What them. do you mean? New, well, new. What do, you, what do you know? What do you think yeah. he means by new orgasms? Unclear. Because I, I here's the thing. I always want to meet people where they're at, and I'm not sure. How much? What you know about orgasms? What's new to you might not be new to someone else. Uh, Do you want well, to... I've had a, I've had an orgasm uh, with my, <laughs> with my penis. Okay, that's great. <laughs> that is a penile orgasm. Yep. That's an okay. orgasm. That's a real I've orgasm. Had, I've I, had, and I've I had love one it. of those as well. I'm a real. Okay. I'm a big fan of those. <laughs> right? They're a good time. Um. I don't know what other types there are that I okay. could have. Uh, you, yeah. So why don't we get into that? Especially because you guys are in male bodies because you have penises. I can yeah. say all the things here, right? Like really, like that's a oh, clinical yeah. term. You have a penis. So people with penises, um, they can also have something called a prostate orgasm because um, men have a prostate. And so that's through your anus. There's this wonderful little walnut-shaped um bunch of clumps of nerve endings um, yep. there that you could find about two inches inside with a finger or a toy. Two and inches inside your butt, yep. there's a yep. walnut. About two inches. There's a walnut, <laughs> yes. Kind of like a walnut. And you don't even have to eat walnuts. I get it. I've heard no. about this. This is, a, this is a good one to start with because I've, <laughs> I've, I've never had one of these. But I did have a friend one time who told me that if I... That I sh- he he described it, and I was like, "Oh my god, I gotta, I gotta have one of these." Are you talking about the yes. milking the milking of the prostate? Is that what yes. you're talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what well, what is it? What is it okay. like? What do you do to the walnut? Okay, two, you so, said two inches. It's about an inch, yeah, an inch and a half. Two. You gotta find it. Kind of find it yourself, um, but or someone could find it for you. But it's sort of like you could put a finger inside and it, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's like a come hither motion towards your belly button. And it's similar to how to find a G-spot on a female partner. In the sense okay. of it's that same motion, like towards the yep. belly button. I don't know why my hands of, are like this. Yeah, I am too, I'm showing you. <laughs> put them away. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that how you find it. And so what happens is it's sort of responsible for... Um, yeah, you can, it can help. The, the amazing thing about it, and the reason why you don't know about it, is because there is a lot of people who believe that if they ever explored that area, the prostate and what could feel amazing, that it would somehow define their sexuality. Like, maybe it'll make me gay. Maybe it'll people right. think things. And and I don't oh. think that, 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 the, um, that the gay community particularly has has a um you know a lockdown on the prostate market it just means that they like kind of discovered it in other ways that we feel shame about but i'm telling you a sex act doesn't make you gay if you were into it which i hope that you might be after today that's amazing and there has to be some exploring and some you know hunting around but once you find it it can feel incredible and it's sort of stimulating this different part so it's different than a, a your regular orgasm 
It's okay. different than orgasming through your penis because you're stimulating the prostate, which is like seminal fluid in it. And you kind of, it feels different, but it can feel incredible. So for the majority of penis owners, as I call them on my show, um, they say that it's a very intense feeling that they feel throughout their whole body. And it's a little bit more, you know, intense. And yeah, not even more in, more intense than a yes. A, than I was going to say a normal orgasm, but I mm-hmm. I don't want to say that because that's I, okay. Well, than a wiener orgasm, I didn't know way more intense. I didn't know I was going to have to go here so early in this conversation. <laughs> um, if you're about to tell me that you've had one of these and you haven't told me about it, I'm going to be pretty. I mad. don't tell you everything, man. But this <gasps> is, I mean, if this is like an earth shattering orgasm, and you're like keeping it to yourself, I I had to talk to another friend. Who told me about it? Uh, I think I know who you're talking about. <laughs> so, okay, well, you tell me this. So, I, I what I'll say is that I don't necessarily think that I, there, you know, my wife and I have figured out like the uh, what you might call the milking of the the, the prostate. But isn't there a similar? Th- <laughs> Is that a thing? Oh man! Is, did he just make that up? I I I, I no, wasn't. Milking I'm, the prostate is stimulating the prostate. I'm glad. I'm glad that I did not think about this ahead of time because Does milk come out of it. It's seminal fluid, dude. Seminal fluid comes so, yeah. out of comes out of where? You're, okay. Do you yeah. know? You know. It what produces we, the fluid in semen, but it's like the size of the shape of the walnut. But there's also the seminal fluid that comes out of it. Like so, we used so to you call ejaculate. It pre- Hold on, let me. I, yes. I know a little bit about this. We used to call it pre when we were growing up, right? You remember that? Like, especially when you were like a teenager and you were hanging out with a hot girl and spending time with her, and then all of a sudden <laughs> time you get her. home. And, and and for me, I honestly didn't even have to like she it it, it what nothing had to happen. Sometimes it was just like something could happen, and just the thought of something could happen. You get yeah. home and you look in your drawers and you're like, uh, there's uh, I was re- there was some stuff happening where I was getting ready for this. Right, that's. Seminal fluid, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You've, yeah. Ex- you've experienced yes. this, right? So, yes, I, I love that. By the way, so here, here's what I will tell you, and I'm trying. I'm just, I can't. I, I thought we would warm up to this, but you're the no, one who man. decided we would jump get into, into it. This. We jumped so, into orgasms. <laughs> this is not sex. This is conversation about sex. We got to jump into it. Uh, so, I have uh, experimented with uh, a, a butt plug. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, nervous, oh, nervous laugh. Very. Is this, that's is this a great surpri- way. Is this, is this surprising to you? It's offensive to me. Why is it offensive to you? Because you didn't, sh- you didn't share it with me. I'm not gonna share my butt plug with you, man. Like that's unsanitary. You're not really supposed to share it with your partner unless you like boil it ahead of time. <laughs> a boiling bl- butt plug? That sounds like torture. Um, no, you you wait for it to cool before you insert it. Uh, I meant share the experience, not, not the experience. I, like, loop me in, like an e- like an no, email. The, correct, an email would have been nice. The term is lube you in, actually, uh, I, because I lube is very important. Now, just like a okay. just like a DM, just anything. It's like a, a text, maybe. Uh, Emily, ask so me about butt plugs. What, what, I, what I'll say is that this uh, this you know this intrigued me. This intrigued me a while ago. I think the first time I. Um, uh, experimented with one. I mean, it's. I think it was probably 15 years ago. I was. I was still very much like a evangelical Christian, you know, conservative. But my view p- towards sex and in the way that my wife and I think about sex has always been very open and and, and kind of adventurous. So, um, but it, but it was kind of like I don't it, like I don't know. I kind of makes me feel like I'm I'm having to, about to take a sh- and like you you know like you, I didn't know how to really embrace it. So it hasn't been something that has happened, but, but you uh, purchased one, and you, yeah, yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. D- you, you, you plugged your 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 butt, yeah, with, with a it. very small one, yeah, and then d- w- w- you didn't come to work that way, did you? No, <laughs> but I know from listening to Emily's podcast that there are people who will go to work and wear a butt plug all day, right? Yeah, yeah, some people you you learn that from yeah people probably called in and asked. How long is too long to wear a butt plug? I mean, it's not a common question, but, you know, there's some sanitary issues, so I wouldn't wear it all day long, you know? Just like anything, you probably got to change it after a while. Maybe a few hours is max, but some people really love the sensation of having something, and this goes for all genders. 
um, it can feel really hot to have something inside of you all day because there's all these nerve endings. I think we need to break down why it feels good too. Okay. There's yeah, so please. many nerve. Are you still okay? Are you recovered from the fact that Red didn't share this with you? Are we good? To move yeah, on? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. just to use an analogy, I feel like it, we jumped right into this sex timber conversation, <laughs> and I was thinking that I was personally, like, proverbially going to be lubed up a little bit before I put the butt plug in, so to speak. This? And I just feel like you kind of forced me into it, to be to be frank with you. Sorry. I'm and there wasn't ass- consent. There wasn't honest. consent. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, sorry, I'm just ass. Like, that's literally where I left that statement. I don't know why I meant to say asking the penetrating yes, questions. But, but what I will say, which I think is what you're getting at here, Emily, is that there is a... Uh, there's a point in which you're like, I understand the the additional sensation yeah. that this offers, the additional seminal fluid that this this offers the situation. It hasn't been the kind of thing that like I, I know just from you know reading that there are some people who are like, Hey, once I went back, once I went to that I never went back and I always have one in every time I have sex. That's not my experience. But I definitely think it's worth experimenting with, and there might mm-hmm. be some benefits. So, Emily. I can, I, can, I can send you a butt plug. We can talk after the show. <laughs> Hold on. I'm here. Do you, ha- that, do you have, like, do you have, like, a, yeah, you, do, do you have a proprietary butt plug? Yeah, I know, but I get so many sent to me. Prostate toys to test. Oh, we need people to test them all the time. But you don't even have to report back just as a gift. My gift <laughs> okay. to you. It seems I, like I, I'm the one who needs it. <laughs> it. Does the butt plug stimulate the prostate yes. and so it gives you a okay. prostate orgasm i almost want my assistant to run because we actually are recording in my house now she can almost like go run and grab a butt plug and a prostate toy yes, to show you because we're on video like let's like you know where they're, they're actually jenna can, in jenna <laughs> jenna's our assistant jenna can you run and grab brett's butt plug <laughs> do you know about this yeah i know exactly where it is <laughs> <laughs> this is literally that is the first th- we gave Jenna a mic. That is the first thing she ever said. <laughs> that she knew where her butt plug was. They gave they gave me a mic for uh, oh, a vulva God. a person with a vulva's point of view on this end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Truly, truly. Um. So, but anyway, where were we? So, so yes, a butt plug is great, and that can be used all genders. Butt plug can put it inside, and it feels great. Um, because there's so many nerve endings right inside. Like a butt plug might only go in like an inch or two, which I know that said that's where the prostate is, but it's a little bit harder to find with a butt plug. A butt, a butt plug will not necessarily stimulate the entire prostate. However, a prostate toy, which is shaped like the internal part of a prostate, that like your prostate, it's a little bit longer. It has some vibrations that go inside. It, it can also vibrate. Oh, Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> this might be your... Oh, I don't know if any of these are prostate toys. Oh, they're not prostate ones. They're it might be hard to ones. find. The tantra, oh, that is so funny. T- uh, what's the line? They're like black. Okay, let me find them. And they, I don't know. We'll have to point the picture. But this is okay. These are all the butt plugs I just happen to have in my uh, in my storage. But, is that just a big box or is that a big butt plug? Or does that, ha- does that have a remote control? Yes, you guys. So much Holy has happened in these years. I'm telling you, Rhett, since you used your last butt plug, you guys, I can send whatever you're interested to. They also don't come in pink if you want, like, a black one or a blue one. But this is one by V-Vibe, but they, it has a remote control. There's other ones that you could use with your phone where you, it digitally, like, you could send your partner. You can link. make calls with the butt plug? I'm not going to listen. I'm not talk- <laughs> I am not talking to my mom through a butt plug. If my, if my mom... <laughs> If my mom calls me up while well, I've got that thing in me, I am not answering, okay? No, I, I recommend that's a, that's a strong no, but, but you can have your partner control it from a phone. From what a happens phone. What happens with, it just vibrates? So some of these vibrate, some place, some, some don't, um, but, but you put them inside and it just sort of like, this one is a, this is by Revive, it's like a, it's called the Ditto. And it, this one does vibrate, it goes inside. And this part also here goes inside, but this stimulates the perineum, which is like the taint, the taint, like a taint. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know what the taint is? Taint your yep. ass, the taint your balls. Is right. that what they say? This part is really sensitive to men too, like right uh, before the, yeah, the taint, the area right there. So if this goes inside of you, this butt plug, then right here, this also vibrates and you can just kind of push it up against. It's like everything that you put in your butt should have a flared edge. It should flare yep. so you don't get doesn't get lost. So you so can. So you don't have to flare. go to the ER like and be one of those stories. You don't want to be on the show. Sex takes you. Did sex send yeah, you to the right. ER? Unless now, you do want to be on that show. Do any of these? Do do any of these uh, 
products, because I think where we might be able to really get Link involved in this, do any of these remote control butt plugs also double as like a Bluetooth speaker? Because I no. feel like if he could pump uh, hip hop to his ass, <laughs> wait, this is yes. the kind of thing that he would love. That might be there your entry it, point. Wait, like a Tribe there. Called Quest? Well, the entry point is the anus. <laughs> uh, I, I understand that. There is another company that makes one that you can set to your, your playlist and it will vibrate along with your playlist. Yes. What? Oh, yes. yes. This. Okay, thank you. Good job. So, so tell, she, tell me how to use this thing. Let's just, but yeah, exactly. I'm getting really over head here on all the things. So what you do is you, so this is just a program. Okay, so this one is the prostate toy. Can you see this? So Progasm this one, 20 anniversary. Dang, there's so much You guys, tech. I'm obsessed with this um, brand because Aneros is like knows all about it. So this one looks a little bit more like your prostate, right? Like this one fits in a little bit more snug. But I okay. recommend for any kind of anal play, starting with something a little smaller like a butt plug, okay? Okay. How you start is, the first thing I would recommend, if you haven't ever even ventured into that area, then maybe when you're having your alone time, like if it's your masturbating or with your partner, your wife, to first just explore anal play. Like, what does it actually feel like even to have a finger outside of my anus? Because there's a lot of, like, muscles that feel really great. Like, the sphincter muscles are very sensitive in that area. Like, you don't want to go from zero to anal, is all I'm saying. Like, gotcha. you don't want to... Yeah. Let's build up. That's going to be, the, be the name of this episode, <laughs> Zero to Anal. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. That's, a, that's yeah. exactly what we did. Yes. So you want to start out with fingers, maybe your own fingers or your partner's fingers. You want to always make sure that your hands are clean, your fingernails are trimmed, you or your partner's or probably everyone's. And you want to use a lot of lube because the anus is not self-lubricating. So you want to make sure you use lube and you explore and you think like, whoa, and you just kind of maybe use a finger. What does that feel like to even have something inside of me? I wouldn't go from like zero to like a bigger toy at first. So you try that out and you go very slow and you communicate well with your partner and you're like, oh, that actually does feel good or might feel good. And then you can graduate to a butt plug. Again, you put that in slowly. There's a ceremony. When you, when you graduate to the butt plug, there is a ceremony. There's a tassel and everything. <laughs> Just yeah. so you know. I can send you my, I can send you my gown. <laughs> Okay. Can, will your mom be at my ceremony? Yeah, yeah. My dad will be filming it with his little video camera, too, because he, he films all my graduations. <laughs> this will be one he's never, like, like the likes he's never okay. seen. Is there a qu question for you, I, I want to know, is there any other prep? Because once I start to talk about the good stuff, I don't want to have to go back and talk about the... Um, Make sure the, that you're about empty. Well, Make sure that you don't need to uh, go, go number to the two. Well, here's yeah, the thing. Hygiene. So let's just, we can talk about all the worries that people have, and that's one of them. Like, yeah. first is like, is it going to make me, like, people will think I'm gay if I'm not gay. Um, or that's not that it matters. Yeah, we're, we're over that. You're beyond like, that. Thank God. Okay, good. Okay. The other thing is about we hygiene. We know what makes you gay, and it's who you are. Yeah, it's who you are, who you sleep with, perhaps. Would like yeah. make you gay. Not a toy. So after you feel good about that, the hygiene part is about just like cleaning out your bowel. Like cleaning, I mean, you, you know when you've gone to the bathroom and you haven't. So typically for so, the most of us. Sometimes yeah. as I get older, it's harder to figure out. Let's not, I, wanna, I want to hear this part, but I don't want to dwell on it. Okay, go ahead. We're going to go is, very this quickly. This is a barrier. Empty this is a barrier for not. me. Okay, so okay. we're going to talk about it. So, you know, you know, like when you've gone or you haven't, like if it's been 12 hours and you, you've gone, like, let's say, you know, this is my natural bowel cycle. Okay. I've gone I, I to got the bathroom, that. I clear. That's so that you're pretty much fine. If it's like, yep. oh, I had a really big meal last night. I had lots of beans, rice, whatever. I haven't gone yet. Not the best day to, to try it. Right. But, may, is, but there's is also there any enemas. More, is, okay. So is there any more... Is there another Prep. level of clean? Like, okay. I, 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 I'm a fan of cleaning all types of things. Matter of okay. fact, but my problem is I clean things too much. Well, this is, okay, again, I happened to listen to the, the right episode, and it's first, so it's very fresh in my oh, memory. Yeah? <laughs> but, I love this. Uh, the doctor that you were talking to the first half of your the anal episode, he has his own, essentially, like, he has his own anal douche. What's it called? Future? What's, what's yeah, Future Method. Dr. Evan Goldstein. Yep. Future but I, I have a um, uh, I can't even. I have a bidet. 
Well, oh. that'll take care of some of it. But, some of it. But, but see, but, here's the thing is that, okay, so I actually talked about, I think I talked about this on the podcast, is that, um, maybe I didn't, well, but we're already here, so. Every once in a while, I told you, because you do the same thing. There's been a couple of times when you're about to travel. I know when I'm about to travel, yeah. and I'm like, I'm going to be on a plane today. I'm gonna, I've got to get on. Uh, there's a connection. I don't like sh on a plane or really at an airport. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a big like, fan of like. Do a little enema. Enema. Bef bef the, tra the travel enema. Oh. I, I have to travel with an enema because I, well, I get all clogged oh. up. So but I'm, here's totally, the I'm, I'm totally good with but an enema. On, no, I love but, an enema. No, but see, I'm pulling you back from that because what I learned on Emily's podcast from the from the doctor that what's his name? Dr. Evan Goldstein. Evan Goldstein. If you're just using like water or or a, it's like a traditional enema solution, you're actually like taking things out of the lining that's like a protective lining. So he's got some like pH balance special blend. Okay. He's got a proprietary some blend. guy's trying to sell me something. But I guess. Also, yeah, but he it, is, but let me tell you this, you don't need to. You could go to the grocery store, you go to the store wherever you buy your enemas and you could buy the enema that comes with the vinegar. Pour out all that vinegar. Don't use that. And then just use the hot water and do that and then flush it through your system one or two times so you feel everything's out. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm good there. That's easy, right? Just do that. And then you, you have the confidence vinegar. Yeah. that it's not a question. So you've done a little anal play is what I hear. I mean, if you want to you, well, if you, if you call. It's always felt like an emergency a, situation. I know, but I'm saying that, like, I would say that you are... And I'm not speaking for all men, or all men who grew up in our environment with our background, but we we, we are all uncomfortable with the idea of like the ass, right? And so, but the dookie shoot. The, the as fact that you the fact that you are doing an enema, a pre-travel enema, and then talking about it on the internet, you're way ahead of the game. Yes. <laughs> right. You know, you're ready to you're ready to go on to middle school and then the graduation into the butt plug zone. But the question, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lap you, buddy. The, this is not a competition. <laughs> the question I have for you, Emily, is um, how, do you, how do you address couples or people in general who are like, man, they're, they're, like we aren't even having sex on a regular basis mm. or we're not even talking about sex or like we do it the same way every single time. So like we are seven layers removed from butt plug graduation mode. Right. You know, what, what, do you, what do you think is the key to, because I think that the thing that's, that, that we find is that, you know, when you just talk about this stuff and you start exploring it together as a couple, there's just, there's a world of fun that you're just leaving on the table if you are just like, uh, this makes me feel uncomfortable. And I'm not trying to shame anybody who's not, you know, who may not be as comfortable. You don't have to be comfortable with all this stuff. That doesn't make you normal or abnormal or whatever. But if you kind of are interested and you want to do this, but the idea of broaching this topic with your partner is something that makes your sphincter completely shrivel up. Uh, how do you, how do you address those people? Mm, such a good question because Mo, I would say again, I love this question because this is the challenge. Most couples have a hard time talking about sex, and most couples in long term relationships have gotten to, or have gotten or will get to the point where sex has become kind of mundane, rote, a little bit stale, and maybe they even stopped having sex and they literally don't know what to do, how to talk about it, or where to start again yep. to kind of bring back that spark. And if you haven't talked about sex and nothing's been happening a while, again, I probably wouldn't go from not talking about sex to anal. <laughs> like I would probably start in another area. Yeah. And so what I would recommend <laughs> yeah. is, um, is really just, I have these three T's of communication and they've helped many, many people. And it's timing, tone, and turn. Because what I found is that we don't know how to bring this topic up. Like maybe you want more sex than your partner, or maybe you both realize it hasn't been happening yet. You really don't know how to talk about it. And you keep hoping it's going to get better. Or one day your partner's going to come home and be like, I'm ready. And, and the, it just, or that just, di it's just died. And the first thing I want to do is normalize that for every couple that is in a long-term relationship. I hate saying every, cause it's like, no, we haven't fine. But the majority, 99% of couples are going to get to a point where they get into a sexual rut. Um, and that's because we don't talk about sex. We are not comfortable with it. And we assume that when there's a problem with our sex life, it probably means either like 
we shouldn't be together anymore. It's something I did wrong. I'm no longer attractive. My partner doesn't find me attractive. And we create all these stories in our head. And since we don't have a lot of great examples of people talking about sex, we just decide to say nothing. So with timing, tone, and turf, which is a great way to have it, you've never, like, I'm going to assume for the majority of the listening, it's gotten stale, or for you guys, maybe. I know you didn't say that, but you're not really sure how to broach it. And so when you, the timing is when you are just hanging out. You're not halt, I like to say, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. So make sure none of those things are happening, but you're in a good place. You're I'm chilling. always hungry, though. I know. Well, one of them, at least. You're not so hungry that you're going to be cranky. Got it. And then, so that's the, that's the, um, that's the timing. Like, it's not going to be after the last time you got frustrated that the sex didn't happen. And then you're like, why didn't it happen again? No, it's that time. Yeah. And then your tone is compassionate and it's curious. And it's like, hey, I realize that we haven't talked about our sex life in a long time. And I realize that we probably both want to be great lovers to each other. So maybe we can start to figure out ways to talk about it. And I'd let you know that I'd love to find ways to, to so we can both get our needs met, be wonderful lovers to each other, have more satisfaction. And the conversation just goes from there. And then the tone, the turf is outside the bedroom. Many couples think that the conversation should have in the, happen in the bedroom because mm. if you were talking about like a recipe, it would happen in the kitchen. But the bedroom, I believe, I deeply believe it should be for sleeping and for sex. So to have the conversations when you're like on a road trip, you're hanging out together, you're just in a good mellow space. Um, so you're on my walk. side. You believe no talking in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not about these things. You can dirty talk in the bedroom. Uh, so, And at what point do you reveal that you've had a butt plug in the whole time? <laughs> well, if it has That's a tail, if it has a, if it has a tail on it, oh, which I haven't done that. You can do that. You can get them with tails. I have oh, like a tail. furry tail? Yeah, like yes. a furry tail. Oh. Yeah. I haven't done that yet, but I feel like, you know, after this conversation, if you I gotta yank do on it, does it make raccoon sounds? You don't want to yank on it. Just a little, a light tug at most. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That that question that was very that question very was helpful. very helpful, but honestly, it just wasn't juicy enough for me. What's okay. another orgasm that I can have? Oh, we're back to orgasms. Okay, another one that you can have or that your partner can have. Yeah, let's focus on what our partners. Can okay, experience. let's let's talk about the partner. Okay. So, what kind of orgasms do we know about with our partners? So you've got the you've got the clitoral orgasm and then you've mm -hmm. got the vaginal orgasm and those are different even though the clitoris can extend all the way inside de depending on the the person's anatomy right it goes further than others i so i i'm familiar with these concepts good i love this we're so good so there is a clitoral orgasm, which we all know the clitoris, we might not know, has 8,000 nerve endings. I'm actually going to show you another prop here. My oh, vulva puppet. We've got a... you got a clitoris puppet? Yes, please. Oh, I, I do. What, I wonder what voice she's going to use for it. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Hello, this is your <laughs> vulva. <laughs> no, I, think, I think you need to go again, like, go like Oscar the Grouch. Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> Eeyore. No, oh my God, not hot Oscar the Grouch. Co what does he do? Oh, he's Amazon to the cookie. That's a cookie monster. I don't know if I can break it to author. I don't think I can break it, Oscar the Grouch, but you guys can narrate the, the vulva. No, you do it. Don't okay. let, no. I'm the left vulva. <laughs> Are you the right yes. one? No, I'm not. I'm not gonna, you be the right I'm not going to be one half of a vulva puppet with you. I'm sorry. Look up here in between us. Look at that man in the boat. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Good. Although there's only one vulva. There's oh. only one vulva, but you could be the labias. There's two labias. Oh, you yeah. could be the See, left eye and the right. Yeah, you're talking about so, right and left vulvas, man. I'm the left labia. So let me just say this. The vulva is referring to the external part of the vagina, which yes. a lot of people interchange them, vagina. I, I, listen, I am guilty know of this. this. I, what I said last year, and I've tried to take responsibility for this, but okay, so we talked a little bit about our my spiritual background. But I said that I thought that the best exist the best um, evidence for the existence of God is the vagina, right? Is my favorite thing in the in the world. And then everyone went on to tell me that what you're really talking about is the vulva. 
Yeah. But it just it just sounds when you say it in the context of like a colloquial like philosophical thing, it feels like I know I'm technically wrong. But when you say vulva, it kind of sounds like in that context you're trying to like prove that you know all the terminology. So you're but when but why when can't the doctor you just is be talking wrong. about it. Just be wrong, dude. I said I'm technically no, wrong. No, just be totally but wrong. But I'm spiritually right. No, just be totally wrong. Okay, the best existence, the best evidence for the existence of God is the vulva. There, I said it. Okay, great. I love it. And the clitoris. <laughs> and man, I'm That's with like, you. Great. Good. <laughs> You're going to tell so, me that the clitoris has more nerve endings than the, than the head of the penis. I've heard nice. that. Nice. Yes. In fact, the clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings and the penis, circumcised penis, has 4,000. Oh, man. So, From an evolutionary standpoint, it's weird that it's separated from the uh, the insertion point, you know? It's like, because it seems like, again, just evolutionarily speaking, I you know, if you're thinking about procreation, that the most, the, the insertion of the penis into the vagina should, like, wh- why aren't the nerve endings down there? Mm. I wonder. This is such a good question. I am so glad you brought it up. It's because we've been told, and you guys might be familiar to this from your upbringing, that sex is all about procreation. Penis goes into vagina, we are procreating, sex happens, baby's born, and that's the only time we should be having sex. That is the marketing machine behind sex, that it's Mm. procreation. But what we've come to find out is that the truth is the majority of people with vulvas will not have an orgasm with penetration for exactly the reasons you're talking about. Because when there is a penis going into here, it is nowhere even scraping or saying hello to the clitoris. So the majority of women, and I would say only 25% of women, have an orgasm with a penis in their vagina. So procreation, I mean, so penetration was all about procreation. And otherwise, you were shamed if you had any other kind of sex in many places in the world. Well, and, and so, also in me, in media, like everything we grew up watching, it was yes. just like, oh, okay. So when you're having sex with a woman, like you're thrusting, you're thrusting, and then eventually she has an orgasm from this act. And oh, and and and, and you probably have it at exactly the same time if you're really good at it, you yeah. know. And so that was the that was the the thought that we all brought into. Yeah, fake, Our fake news, fake propaganda. It's fake sexual yeah. propaganda was all about that. So, so what I'm saying is, but here's what I want to tell you. The good news is, so let's just say like these are the labias. This is the clitoral hood. This is the this is the clitoris. But just so you know, and I think you mentioned this earlier, is that it has eight thousand nerve. I mean, you did mention that, but it's not just this little bulb. Do you know that the clitoris has legs that extend deep inside? So here's the actual clitoris, and it goes behind this structure. Looks so like a wishbone. This, Exactly, it's a wishbone. And this part right here is the clitoris, but everything else is internal. So those 8,000 nerve endings are right behind the labia. See what I mean? Whoa. And so when you are stimulating it here, that's great, but it's also stimulating internally all these areas that feel good with the okay. legs of the clitoris. This so, is the clitoral legs, yeah, I has think legs. That- answers if i go like purely scientific and evolutionary theory here the developmentally the um the clitoris is is comparable to the to the to the head of the penis but then as a as a human develops it either turns into a penis or it turns into a based on clitoris the, and everything based else based on hormones in the in the process. exactly and, then I, and i do think that what so maybe from an evolutionary standpoint that like the clitoris has gone down there yes. more than I realized. More than you realized. Yeah. And the I, penis and, let, and the clitoris are analogous, truly. And they I don't want to, I want to keep giving you merch ideas, but I just had another one. <laughs> I think you need to start selling the clitoral hoodie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that just. I fe- love that. That just feels like it's going to sell itself. Yeah. I mean, all, it doesn't have to, I mean, it's just a hoodie. 
with maybe like maybe there's a cool sort of abstract clitoris design on the back or the front, so you don't really know. <laughs> but you just on your website, it's the clitoral hoodie. I also think that <laughs> I lo- I Dr. Emily that. could sell a travel pillow that is shaped like a clitoris. Like this is the this is the entire uh, clitoris, yep. and then you wrap it around your neck. And it's a great conversation. You're piece. always educating. And then you're you're sleeping. You're yeah. I, I, what a what better way to sleep than being <laughs> wrapped in a clitoris? Great. Swaddle swaddled with your clitoris, right? Yeah. So I love it. What do we? What do? We, what what do, you do, do I? What can I do that I haven't been doing? Well, but before you get there, I, <laughs> to I, the clitoris, because I the. You didn't like I, that question? I, no, no, because I, I don't, I don't want to leave this subject yet because, first of all, I'm going to have to... I mean, my wife is fine with me talking about a lot of stuff. I'll obviously have to ask her. If she, I, I'm going to go ahead and just disclose some things, and then I'll ask her before we release this episode if this was okay. Perfect. But so, but so um, I think she is typical of a lot of women in that the, you know, I would say every orgasm has been a clitoral orgasm, but there has been, over the past 20 years, there has been the quest for the vaginal orgasm, right? Which is like, oh, I think it's about to happen. Oh, is it, oh, is it, is it, is it gonna happen? And so what do you think about that quest? Is that something that, is it, is it something that you should just abandon? Is it something No. Okay. No, don't ever abandon the exploration of your bodies. And there's a lot of different theories around the internal orgasm, AKA the G spot. In fact, I sort of don't even think it's a spot. I think it's more like an area. And I also think that it's a lot of it is connected to the, the clitoral, the clitoral legs. So when you go inside of here, like, well, first let me tell you this, it's, it's very, the easiest way or the, one of the first steps to actually having an internal orgasm or G spot orgasm is making sure that you have a clitoral orgasm first that you're already stimulated, you're already turned on because the blood becomes more engorged, you're, you get swollen, you get turned on, and then you're more likely to be able to find the G-spot, which much like the prostate, is about an inch and a half inside, using your fingers in a come hither motion, trying to find this little rough area, which could be like the G area. So that's the, that's the spot. And it helps again to be aroused, and then you just kind of use that with the finger and just kind of penetrate to kind of like feel around and apply pressure and see where that goes. It could be a blended orgasm too, when she already has a clitoral orgasm, sometimes it's just easier to have like a blended one. So it feels like all of them. And again, for some people, and I believe this too. I love a good smoothie. A a blended smoothie, a blended orgasm smoothie. Why not? They sell that at Air One, I think. Or they should maybe, I don't know. Um, It's way too expensive though. And you gotta give them enough. Um, but, but yeah, so no, I, I think that with toys and with fingers and with talking about it, I think that many, many women can find this elusive G spot, but orgasm, but it's not going to happen through a penis for many. Like if it hasn't happened yet after 20 years, this has nothing to do with your penis. It has everything to do with the anatomy. If you put a hundred women in a room and you looked at all of them touching themselves, let's say they were all like doing the thing that makes them feel good, they'd all be doing something different because Hmm. our vaginas, our vulvas are like snowflakes and they're all different. So every single woman needs something else. So it's a little bit- Oh, that's cold. (laughs) 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 Gotta warm it up. (laughs) It's like a snowflake. Well, in a room full of dudes, you'd see him doing different stuff. We knew a guy in high school that did the two hand thing like this. He would make, he he did that kind of thing. Uh, Yeah, he did. Remember you well, told us we that? didn't we didn't witness it, but he did choose to tell. No, us. but he just told. I guess one of those conversations where everybody was he just made a, disclosing, and they were talking the about the double hand diamond. Yeah, well, Link Link admitted that he uses his left hand, uh, which is just another piece of evidence that he's left-handed. He also holds a microphone with his left hand. Sorry if you didn't want me to share that. We could edit it out. And then another friend. <laughs> Talked this about the double the double thing. So, I mean, guys do it in all kinds of different ways as well. Guys do it all different ways, too. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And so, um, right, we all do it differently, but have fun. And I also recommend current couples to do this together. Like a mutual masturbation sesh, sesh is a super hot thing for couples to do, to be like, I am going to look at what I do. I'm going to turn myself on. You're going to turn your, you're going to do your thing. And then I'm going to like, there's two reasons why I love this, because mm. You're gonna see what turns your partner on, and that's really hot to see them touch themselves. But you're also gonna learn, like, 
what are they actually doing? How do they touch themselves if they masturbate? Which I hope they do. Yeah. And then you just learn, you learn and you slow down and it's a process. But if it hasn't happened all these years, and there's nothing wrong with you either, because again, the majority of women are not, and it has to do with their anatomy. It has to do with biologically speaking, how closely their vaginal opening is to their clitoris. And for those women, they're more likely to have more internal orgasms. But for the other ones, they got to experiment with. There's some great toys, fingers, taking the pressure off, experimenting, and having a clitoral orgasm first. Those uh, are my best recommendations for that orgasm. So I'm trying to think, what else, what else is there down there that can be splinted? Squirting. Let's talk about that. Okay. What? Let's what, talk. what? What's my question here? Um, is it P and does it matter? Is it, it P? Thank you. Thank you. That's the top question. Okay. Well, first of all, squirting. I did a show on squirting. If anyone wants to check it out at Sex with Emily, can you imagine this? It's like the most popular show I've done in 20 years. But I had a squirting. I mean, people just love talking about squirting. But what it is, is it is liquids for its periurethral fluids. There are traces of urine. They have done studies of women who completely empty their bladders and then they have an orgasm and then yes, there's still urine in it. Um, my answer to that is, so what? Who cares? Does it feel good? Throw a sheet down. But there was a lot of debate, like, is it pee? Is it whatever? So I don't know, like if we wanna spend time there, great. But I don't think it matters. But the, what I can say is that for many women, they can squirt or female ejaculate by stimulating the female prostate, which we also have one as well. Where um, is that? The, the, the female prostate is sort of inside the vaginal. I think you guys should just listen to this show we did with Deborah Sandel, who like in the 70s started like teaching women to squirt. But the prostate is like, once you get aroused and engorged, like I said, it's like a little area right behind the vaginal wall where you might be fighting, looking for the G-spot. Okay. Um, and you can so see still it on and the it front swells. Side. Still on the front side. Okay. And it swells. And very, eventually that also has prosthetic fluid in it. And when stimulated, um, a woman can ejaculate. Now, here's the thing about ejaculation. It can feel amazing, like an incredible lease, release. But it's not necessarily... it. You can squirt and not orgasm. You can orgasm and not squirt. So I think that squirting became really popular during like with the advent of porn or with porn being in our available in our pocket, in our yeah. pocket all the time. Um, and it's time to see so, more, so many more women squirting. So I just have gotten so many more questions about it since then. But it's definitely like a fun thing to explore. You can help your partner do it using fingers or your penis or a toy. And really, it just comes from continued pressure to that internally. Pressure, 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 feeling a release, and then she can release and learn. I think that many women can learn to squirt. It just takes some time. Because it, it gives you this, it, it's a different type of, I, I can relate to it. Because like with an ejaculation, there's a sense of completion. Is that, would you describe it in that way? A sense well, I of would completion? describe it's not necessarily completion. So what I was saying for many women, they have one and they just feel release and it feels really good, but it's not necessarily an orgasm. Now, some women have it alongside their orgasm. Like they have it with an or I mean, they, they have it with an orgasm and they squirt. And it's just different for all different kinds of women to say if they would define it as completion, but they might define it as like a, just like a really intense release that could be kind of emotional, physical, and, and, and once you once you know that it is a possibility and you have experienced it, it, it can be this thing where, well, we got to go until that happens because that's the sign. I think that's kind of what you're yeah. getting at. Like that's the sign that is that this the definition the, the of success has been, has been done. You know, we all get to define what success looks like in a relationship and in an orgasm. That's right. why I hate to put labels on it. It's like, was it a success? Like, how did your partner feel? Did she feel good, bad? Did she feel like it was a pain in the ass or was it not a pain in the ass, pain in her vulva? Did she feel like it wasn't like a fun thing to do? Like that's to me is what successful sex is. Or did we talk about it? Did we both get our needs met? Whatever our needs were, were that day. 
Was there some aftercare? We cuddled after. We talked about things. Like, to me, that's a successful romp. Okay. Well, let's talk about missionary. Uh, not just because we used to be missionaries, um, which is no exaggeration. Could I? Inter- I just had one. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Jenna, yes. Jenna, Jenna has let's give Jenna, Jenna, Jenna where have you been my whole life? Yes. I was like, hi. <laughs> one, quick, one thing. To go back um, with squirting, well, like, the first thing with that was there's such an interesting, because... I am a Volvo owner who has squirted in the past. And I think one of the things that's so interesting about it is there's a weird mix of, oh, that's so amazing and and shame as well. Like I totally have been with a partner before Mm. and I have squirted. And then my partner was like, oh, gosh, what is all of this? And it made me feel Uh. like what it was like the word. And it was it was early on in my like sexual like. Mm, a, awakening, I suppose. So, like, s- still trying to feel comfortable. So, I know a lot of other women have experienced that. I'm also mm. one of the 25 percent as well who can do can have the vaginal. But that was something that I learned on like solo, trying out things with myself, masturbating. Right. Like that. That was like in my own sexual awakening, separate from a partner. But then, okay. yeah, having those discussions with partners now of just like. You're going to be chill with all this stuff, right? Like, this is a good thing. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so glad you brought this up. You just brought up, like, so many great points. The first thing is that, like, yeah, a lot of us have been shamed by a partner. That's I once had a partner who was, like, I remember, like, I got my period or something. And he was, like, oh, God, like, we got to change the sheets and take a shower and, like, call 911. I'm, like, (laughs) are you kidding me? Like, it was a great sex. So, so then we get shamed. We're like, I have to put blankets down and sheets down. And there is that partner who shames us all the time. Like, ew, it's a mess. And yes, I've had guys call in and be like, it's a mess and I don't want it. It's fine. And like, I think like throw a towel down, throw a beach towel down, like do something. There's some, there's throws that are just made for sex because sex can be messy. Um, I think if they're not preparing it or maybe they're a little OCD, like that just rocked their world. So I'm sorry you got shamed that way, but I just, again, yeah, we want to move on to partners that are like, bring it, like messy and hot and sex is all those things. And those are the partners that I choose to be with. But yet yeah, it's, you know, we all have people from the past that were like, that was not a good lesson that I, not a good message that they sent me because now I feel shame about it. But hopefully we can move on from that. Was that, I mean, were you surprised at that time or were you like, this is your... Oh, yeah. I was super surprised. It was the first time that it had happened for me. So I was also like, what? Because, like, I didn't really watch porn. So I didn't know necessarily that that is something that is what happens. And then, you know, my my sexual education was um, lacking, of course. But then, um, yeah, I started talking to my girlfriends because my girlfriends and, and I are all super open with each other. And I started asking them. I was like, is this weird? He said it was weird. And then my friends were like, absolutely not him like that's amazing that happened to you i'm so happy for you and like you can find that with somebody who's gonna be like really excited but yeah it was a weird like i had to just feel comfortable sharing the experience and feeling comfortable talking to my friends about it and like i think that's what i suggest for a lot of younger um women who are starting their like sexual journey is like Talk to your friends. Like, as soon as I tar- start talking to my friends, we have the best conversations about it. Like, it's great. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. exactly it. Well, Find and I, I, I mean, yeah. that, that's, that's true for, for us, too. I mean, it's like, uh, I was giving you a hard time about not telling about the butt plug, but there's a lot of stuff that we talked about and encouraged each other. And it's like, oh, I... I discovered this, or this works for us. Well, it's like, I just know. feel like in the context, I have to tell this story. Um, so... Again, this is probably 16, 17 years ago. Um, when me and you were emceeing Big Break. <laughs> okay, so this is like, this is when we were in it to win it on the, the, the Christian um, missions, you know, side, right? And so we were emceeing this conference uh, for Campus Crusade down in Panama City. And, the you know, it's basically a bunch of college students coming together. And then they kind of they go out on the beach and, you know, try to talk to people about Jesus. And so we're up there, like, we're leading the thing, doing our comedy stuff in, fr- in front of all them. Does that make you horny? <laughs> and at that conference, 
Because, you know, the cool thing about it when being on staff is like, oh, we get to stay in this nice hotel and like me and Jesse get this time together, right? And at that time, uh, I don't think we had, maybe it was before we had kids or we left the kid, I left Lock at home, I don't know. But anyway, during that, at that conference in that hotel was the first time that we ever experienced Jesse squirting. And again, and I had, I, even though I was a good Christian boy, I had watched enough porn to know exactly what had just happened. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, you know, like, um, but yes, it was just so funny that it happened in the, in the context of this. And and we've talked about squirting before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this, this thing is not news to me, but, and then for me, you know, it's, I, I have this reputation of being, uh, like some people might say OCD or OCPD or like they, you know, it's it, but I'm, you know, and I am a clean freak and I like things, you know, certain, I, 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 I take joy in cleaning things and ordering things and organizing things. But when it comes to sex, there was a decision that I made that was, I don't know when I made it, but it was a long time ago. And I think it was a result of the conversations that we were having. And it was just like, you know what? This is fun. This is an adventure. This is a place for play. This is a place for discovery. It's not about, um, you know, as long as you're both on board and you're communicating, there's the, the world is your oyster. Mm-hmm. And so that was, that was kind of my approach. And then saying, you know what? There's something that I might, my knee-jerk reaction might be, oh, this is, this is this could be dirty. Or you could see this as dirty, or you could see this as gross. It's like, well, and I, that, that was well, the advice that we were getting. I, the, so the one piece of advice that I got from somebody who actually talked to both of us before we got married, who was in our lives at the time, uh, yeah, was and again, I I think you know as as much as we talk about our Christian background, the thing I will say is that we did come from a particular tradition in which. Uh, even though there was some very restrictive views on sex and who sex could be with, it was obviously only between a man and a woman and only in the context of marriage. That was sort of the pretense. But right. within that, con- in the confines of that, there, was, there wasn't a whole lot of shame. It wasn't as shame-based as it, ha- it is in a lot of traditions. So I'll say that. That's why I think that we ended up having pretty good sex lives from the beginning because uh, we got kind of lucky with the specific people we were talking to but one of the things that i was told from somebody who kind of mentored me was like everything's okay but just stay away from the butthole <laughs> and that was the, that was it was just like that was his one piece of advice so yeah, and I, it was not grounded in anything yeah so i think that that is an idea and that's just not a christian idea that's no. a cultural yeah idea so we're back to that but yeah. in general i'm i'm glad to say that i've reaped the benefits of um, checking any sort of, uh, I don't know what the word would be, like um, just my resistance, my right. resistance or hesitancy at the bedroom door and saying, you know what, this is, th- this is a place for us to have fun together. And so l- let's be adventurous. Um, and let's see what we can discover. And that, that's led to a whole lot of fun. I think my tendency is, is actually to... Um, just find what works and just just go back to it. You know, like I am a creature of habit. Like if I find a if I if I find the right answer, or if I if I you know where the gold nuggets are, I'm gonna go back to that same yeah mine. You know, so th- there's a I think there's a discipline to saying okay, I'm gonna keep working at this. I'm gonna keep building skills and experiences and that it there it there's some there's a level of commitment and energy involved in like continuing to prioritize your sex life right yeah yeah couples that i mean exactly like couples have to continue to build a dialogue around sex and talk the more people talk about it it becomes way more comfortable and you get to talk about things like all the time to the point where it becomes as comfortable as talking about the weather. And you look forward to talking about sex because you now know that you're on the same page. All the weird stigmas go by and you're like, oh, how was that for you? Like, you almost do like a play-by-play. Like last night, what'd you think of that new thing I did with the toy or my finger? 
oh yeah, I love this part, didn't love that part. Like that's the world that I want to see couples and people living in where it just sex is like, of course we're gonna talk about how am I gonna know? You're not a mind reader. I'm not a mind reader. So yeah, I want couples just to, to continue to enhance and have these conversations and it's going to change everything because the couples that talk about sex have better sex. Well, th- that's yeah. not, one of the things Nothing that, was more, just to add to that, nothing was more amazing than when I heard the feedback. It was like, wow, that was magical. It, it felt like a mouse was running out of a garden hose. What? <laughs> hey, I guess you had to be there. Uh, I'm glad I wasn't. Um, so that, that is one of the things that I'm really, uh, that I honestly think has been a key to maintaining a, a you know, 21 year marriage now. Um, it was, is, first of all, just blessed with just a natural communication with, with Jesse that was like, we from the very beginning, regardless of the background that we're from, we talked very openly about everything. So the communication has never been an issue, which I'm just thankful Great. for because I know that's not an, that's not for everybody. Right. Um, and then I kind of see this sort of sexual adventure, for lack of a better word, just a broad term, is like that's one of the ways you kind of pace out the uh, the uh, the progression of your relationship. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Even today, you've shown me remote controls and stuff, and I guess I could have told you that those things existed specifically, but we don't have those things in our house. It's just a, it's a wonderful time to be alive, right? (laughs) It's a wonderful time to be alive to know that, like, okay, you can kind of pace these things out. I mean, oh, we're introducing this new thing into into our sex lives that we can kind of enjoy for a while. To me, that's one of the ways that it kind of continues to stay sort of vibrant and continues to get more exciting as you go is like pacing this stuff out introducing new things because i'm because i'm i'm the same way and that you're like okay well which kind of gets back to the conversation i was going to with the missionary thing somehow i've garnered the reputation especially from trevor um who's one of our uh, mythical kitchen ears that me and jesse are really in the missionary sex he just really thought that was a funny joke and then uh, <laughs> really really went for it. And the funny thing is, is that, yeah, we kind of are. We're into a lot of things, but I would say that that is, you know, if you were to see a pie chart of all the sex that Jesse and I have had, the majority of the pie chart would be in the missionary position. Well, it right? gets a bad rep. What's your question? Uh, I, I don't know if there's a question here as much as, why do you think mission? Okay, yeah. Why do you think missionary gets a bad rap? Mm, missionary gets a bad rap because, well, first it's the position that we just kind of go back to over and over again, so it can get really, really boring, and it's kind of our go-to. But there are ways to keep it more interesting and to spice it up. It doesn't have to be the way that you understand it to be. You know why people. I think just because it's the basic position, but you can spice it up like with more eye contact. There's different ways to uh, sit during it. You could be sitting up where your partner comes in like, you could be like sitting on the end of the bed where your partner comes in standing. Like I actually just did a podcast on this, Making Missionary Hot. And I talked all about this. Like there's just all these ways that we just kind of do it the same way. And then there's just like different leg positions. There's something called the cat position, which is the coital alignment technique where harder to explain today, but literally it's missionary, but your partner uh, on top is just sort of scooted up a little bit further. So you have more um, stimulation on the pelvic floor area that can actually lead to more orgasm. So there's just like, It gets a bad rap because it's all we know and it's really standard and your partner can just go in and pound away like a jackhammer. But I like to give hacks for it. Well, and so, but you, you see those alterations as still missionary because I I agree. Like, so if you're facing each other, that's missionary. If I would just, I, I would say, yeah, if like the two bodies are facing each other in general, but if all of a sudden your partner puts her legs straight up in the air and like an L shape, I mean, I don't know. We got to come up with more names, I think. You know, there's different types of missionaries, man. You've got the Mormons who are doing like two years in foreign countries and stuff. Right. Uh, you got the people like us who are going to college campuses. You got people who are going, you know, there's lots of missionaries. The Jesuits are sending people all over the place. So I just think we need to update the terminology. Like, I like to think of the, the position when you 
put the, your your legs up. That's like a Jesuit thing because they're always kind of like. I just feel like they're on the cutting edge a lot of times. The Jesuits. I don't know. Maybe it's just you my lack of experience edge? with Jesuits, but just, they just seem like they're like smart and like doing things. So I call it the listen to the ears. No, I, I meant I meant to say I call it listen to the feet, not oh. with, because my, <laughs> the feet are by your ears. Yeah. Like, yeah. What so, are the? It's like what are the ear? What are the feet saying? What are the feet saying <laughs> from right here? Okay, Emily, this has been very enlightening. I, I, I you've got so we much. We came to a gentle landing that, with the missionary. Well, I, I would say uh, to use the prostate analogy, uh, we would like to m milk you for a, just a few more f facts, uh, a few more tips. Uh, that was, that yeah. didn't come out. That didn't come out great. Um, but this is a safe space. So, if you could give us three sort of parting tips, sex tips, sex tips for everybody. That are like, okay, if, okay. You can, if you can remember these three things to take with you okay. that we haven't talked about. Okay, so I would say uh, foreplay starts after the last orgasm, meaning um, we foreplay all day, continuing to keep that spark alive. A lot of couples are like, we had sex, we did it, and then the next time you come together, you're like, we don't feel as connected. So send a sexy text in the middle of the day, like talk about your sex life, keep sex top of mind. It okay. makes your sex can, easier. Can you dictate that text to me right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I got it. What's, the, ne what's okay. the next hot tip? I mean, the next one would be, I would say communication is a lubrication. The more we talk about sex, the better sex we're going to have. That would be like my time and tone and turf stuff, gotcha. information. And the next thing I would say is slow everything down. Go five times slower than you think. Sex sometimes moves way too fast. And if we like slowly kiss our partner, we slowly undress each other. We move, like we just sort of put more intentionality and more presence with our partner. I think that we'll find a lot of us will be having more successful sex. Mm, that's good. Those, those are good, good words. You know, you should have like a show or something where you talk about sex because <laughs> it just feels like every time you say something is very insightful and like based and like grounded in facts and evidence based. You should really think about that. I, mean, I you should. should. You know you what? Should. Thank you. That clitoral hoodie thing, you got to got to run with that. I, too. That is genius. I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then tra travel pillows mine. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking that as one long, back. As long as you just send us a couple or four, send us four clitoral hoodies when you come out with that. That's all we ask. Done. Done. Thanks so much, Emily. And Rhett. Thank you for having me. Did do you have one in right now? Just be honest. Do I have I uh, know I don't wear the butt plug to work. But if you want me to start, no. I will. No, no, no. Not I'm, yet. I'm gonna just keep asking myself. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Yeah, hope you hope you learned a lot, <laughs> listener. Well, well, that was fun. It was. It was. Ins you know, it was. It's. I love talking about this stuff. I don't want it to necessarily be uh, every single episode, but it's. There's just something about saying that, like, hey, you don't have to feel shame and embarrassment when you say things and talk about these things. Yeah. It's not an easy thing. It's not an easy, bar easy barrier to overcome. I love the fact that for the second year in a row, these conversations kind of bring it to the forefront of my mind and say, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a lot more attention to, to sex and think of new things. Be exposed to new principles techniques. Well, you seem to be So yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm actually very well, I'm very excited now, to go home today. I, I will say you you took issue with me not telling you about my butt plug experience, which boy, I mean, maybe you did. I, not blocked I, it out. I, first huh? of all, maybe I, I wasn't ready first for of all, it. I think I have told you about it. Uh secondly, what are those people on Tumblr that think me and you have sex with each other going to do about this? Like what are they going to like how do, I did how do they uh, how I don't, do I don't think about those people. But the thing I really want to ask you is do you want me to tell you every time I do something new? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Do you want me to send you my old butt plugs when I upgrade to new more technologically advanced ones? No. Okay. Uh do you want me to tell you? Uh See cuz I mean I try things new too. You, like just because I mean there's plenty of things I'll try. I need to think about it. But... <laughs> uh, I'm up for I. I believe I'm up you, man. For, every day I'm up for more than I was the day before. I believe. I'll put it to you. I that believe way. you. 
Thank you again to Emily Morse, Doctor Emily Morse. You you need to listen to her podcast. You know, I I kind of knew of her, but I had not listened to her actually talk about this stuff. Uh, I you know obviously listened to some of her podcasts before she came in here, and I was just like, man, I should be listening to this on a regular basis. Like in just a couple of episodes, I felt like I was like, man. Like this is been missing I, out. I'm a man who has sex with my wife, and I just feel like there's this treasure trove of information. But she doesn't just have sex with Emily; she actually just did a master class. So, oh yeah, like you, a, officially in the master class subscription service. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, she, she did, you can she check she that did out. a master class thing, and also lots of resources and more information about Emily at sexwithemily.com. When you're taking your 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 toddlers to the playground, bring your jam box and play Sex with Emily's podcast. I suggest doing it with headphones on. And make All sure right. that it's going into the headphones and not coming out of your phone. A lot of times you don't realize that it's coming out of the phone. It's just, you, know, you might be a mixed company, so. Uh, we got another special guest coming up on the next episode, um, Emily Nagoski, uh, only, author of the we book. We only speak with Emily's when we talk Come about Come As You so Are, great book. Um, Dr. Yes, Emily Nagoski. Only Dr. Emily's. And we are going to uh, be speaking with her, and then the week after that, we're gonna be, we're gonna, we're gonna open it up to any questions, any, any sort of, I don't know exactly what the prompt is. We'll figure what, that what out. What do we say? We'll put, we'll, it'll be on the, it'll be online. Twitter. Go, of course, go ahead and leave a voicemail. Um, let us know what you think about this episode. We love your responses, One eight eight eight. EarPod1, and of course you can use hashtag EarBiscuits. So we'll speak at you next week. Sex Timber continues. Timber. It elongates through the whole month. Hey there, Rhett and Link. This is Kaylee from Michigan. I'm watching your rabbit hole episode and you're trying to figure out why young people watch podcasts instead of listening to podcasts. I'm, a, I'm, I'm 25, I feel like I'm in the young demographic. When I am watching a podcast, it is because if I listen to it, I will start thinking about other things and then miss potentially like 20 to 30 minutes of the podcast and then I have to like rewind and re-listen to it. So I have it on on my TV, like in my home while I go and do other things like cook dinner or clean things or like I'm a teacher so I'll like grade things and then I have something to look up to and it kind of like re-centers the listening and then I don't miss anything. But I don't just sit and watch it like a movie, it's just like on in the background. So I'm listening technically like a regular podcast, but my eyes have something to focus on. Don't know if everyone does it this way, but that is why I do it this way. Thanks so much, bye. Hi Rhett and Link, this is Yessi from Florida. I just finished listening to Locked going to a university in Florida and I wish him the best. I'm from Miami, so University of Miami Hurricanes was in my childhood. I graduated from the University of Florida, so I'm a Florida Gator, and I married a man who is an FSU, Florida State University Seminole fan. So Florida baby through and through. Bye guys, love you. Hey guys, it's Leslie the truck driver going to Nevada as usual every week. Thank you for everything you guys do. Totally love your biscuits. Um, never knew that in the, my 40s and early 50s I would be a groupie for the first time in my life, but I totally am your groupie. Love you guys. Thank you for everything you do. Cannot wait till Mythicon, guys. I don't care if I get six feet from you, 100 feet from you. It'll be awesome to see you and to see the crew. Bye. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.